I entered plenty of contests and giveaways back when I was engaged, and sadly, I was never a winner. But today, we're going to meet the lucky couple who was chosen to star in Say Yes to the Venue, a multi-part video series that highlights the process of choosing the perfect wedding venue in southwest Louisiana. The premiere season features Lake Charles couple Eloise and Grant who visit five breathtaking venues and they're here with us this week to share their wedding venue shopping insights with you. It's all coming up next on the Wedding Planning Podcast. It was kind of overwhelming at first going into it, but then once we found our spaces, the excitement is real. <laughs> Why, hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Wedding Planning Podcast. Thank you, as always, for taking a few minutes of your day and joining me here to talk about all things wedding. Now, as you probably are already aware, your wedding venue is a huge decision that's going to set the scene for pretty much every other wedding element and every other decision that you'll make over the course of your engagement. On today's show, we're joined by Eloise and Grant, who's a couple from Lake Charles, Louisiana, and they have some pretty incredible insights to share with you, not only about their wedding venue shopping process, but also their top advice on cutting the overwhelm factor as you plan, managing relationships with your family and friends, creative ways for finding the best vendors, and lots more wedding planning gems. Without further ado, here we go. All right. My name is Grant Kelly. Uh, I'm from Lake Charles, Louisiana, born and raised. And this is my fiance, Eloise. Hi, I'm Eloise. I was not born in Lake Charles, but I was raised here from a very young age. And our wedding date is set to August 10th of 2024. So we're a little less than a year away. We're expecting, so we're doing a private ceremony, so we're expecting about 120 people for the ceremony and around 250 for the reception for folks later to join us. It all started when we had seen that there was a contest going on for newly engaged couples in our area in Lake Charles. It took some convincing, but I convinced Grant to do a video submission so we could be entered in the contest. We're both designers, and so we kind of took it a little above and beyond. (laughs) So we really, like, planned it out. We storyboarded it, like, everything, the whole nine. Um, And then we got picked. So from there, we met with our visitors bureau. So they're really trying to promote Lake Charles and, you know, really showcase the venues that are in Lake Charles and all of the options for brides here or brides that there are a lot of brides too, that come from Texas and want to get married in Lake Charles. So we were a part of that series. Um, I'll let you talk about the process if you want the video process. Sure. Like we said, we're both designers, both have been in the creative space uh, for a couple of years now. And it was cool to see a really professional production and planning and all these things go into us getting to see these venues in a new light i say it in the series but when i go to weddings i don't look at the venue i just look at the food and possibly the bar and the dance floor that's what i go and enjoy and look at at weddings so it was cool to see these venues um already done up in a way and and prepped for weddings and you get to see what we could possibly do with them and and yeah it was it was a really cool experience and also getting to see what goes into planning a wedding because you can have all these ideas and all these thoughts and want to do all these things but if you don't have your venue yet you don't know your limitations you don't know where the the ceiling is on on your space so you got to really figure that out first before you can get all these cool ideas and stuff in so that's a really good point the venue definitely dictates the tone, the size, the vibe, the design, it really is the starting point for all of these other things that come up later on in the process. Can you walk us through the actual venue search? So the tour process, the research process, how did all of that go? I just dove in. I did all my research with like, well, first we decided how many people about that we wanted. And then from there, we were looking around at like 
options in our price range. And so we were looking at, we know where people have gotten married previously and what venues we liked. We knew what we didn't want and like the style of wedding, you know, like the venue to match the style that we wanted. Um, and so, I mean, I don't, I really don't know how I would have gone about it without doing this um, show with Visit Lake Charles because they made the process easy. They were like, here's a list of places that we know people love. We're going to set up the appointment times. We're going to like walk y'all through. And at the end, you just have to make a decision. So it was really like, it was a really easy process for us. Yeah. I really think they missed the calling in helping people plan their weddings <laughs> because like I always said, I, I don't know what we would have done. It would have been a lot of long nights and a lot of touring on our own and scheduling on our own, but instead we had a little bit more of a fire under our butts to do this, especially because they were having us on a schedule and, and doing all this stuff. But yeah, it was really cool to see all that and get to do that. Tell us as you were touring these five venues, what are what's your thought process? Like, what are you looking for? Was there anything that you knew immediately? Like, yes, this is the one or absolutely hard pass no like what were your thoughts as you went through those five different places um originally I had wanted well I really wanted an outdoor venue like indoor would be nice but I really wanted it outside Louisiana is very unpredictable in weather so one day you could have a sunny bright day the next it could be freezing and raining like you never really know so um when I pitched that idea to a lot of people they were like uh theoretically yes but we're gonna have to look at other options so um we kind of like narrowed it down to indoor outdoor so we do have a, a plan b in case you know the rain <laughs> but um and then from there yeah i mean from so we also wanted to do some of the stipulations that we have were uh guest count obviously like all weddings but second, we have our vendor for uh, our caterer, I mean, our, our friends that make pizza on the side. So that being one of the caterers, the bar, uh, we want to bring our own alcohol and have our own open bar. Uh, some venues didn't have didn't allow us to do those things. So even though we love the venues, I don't think there was a hard no. Like you said, I don't think there's a hard no on any of them. It was just those little details that we needed to get right because we already wanted to plan for those things to happen. So those are the, the main hurdles, I guess you want to call them, um, to jump over. Mm -hmm. That's really, really great advice as you go into the process to set kind of your non-negotiables, so to speak, or another way of saying it would just be to set your top priorities in what you're looking for. And in terms of catering and the bar, that alone is probably going to filter out a lot of options and really narrow down to exactly what you're looking for and exactly what's most important to you. So that's really a smart, that's a smart tip as you're going into it is to say to yourselves or the outdoor thing, having an option for outdoors, maybe it will rain, maybe it'll be the most beautiful day ever, but that's super important to you. So you need a venue that can accommodate that. So very, very smart to go into it knowing what you want. I recommend everyone does that. Uh, what were some of the most surprising or unexpected emotions or feelings or things in general that you felt or experienced as you guys were shopping for your venue? For me, I feel like it was kind of how everyone reacts. Mine was like, reverse like I was kind of like anticipating like I was very not anxious but you know I was just kind of overwhelmed and I was like I don't even know where to start I don't even know the numbers like that kind of thing and then we the more we looked and like the, the more I guess that space was calling us kind of thing and when we found our venues and when we kind of said like I think this is the one like that's when the excitement started to set in because then like I'm a visual person. So like I visualize like, oh, well, this is where the cake can go. This is where the people can go, like the dance floor, all those kinds of things. So it was kind of overwhelming at first going into it. But then once we found our spaces, like the excitement is real. <laughs> right. And like even more so, it's like there's a 
there's a layer of overwhelming when you're doing all of this and looking at all these venues, trying to think of it from every aspect and every corner. But there's also like, you're trying to envision one of, that's supposed to be one of the best days of your life. So it's like, it's overwhelming, but it's like, oh, that's really cool too. You can kind of sit there and like, oh, that's, I could see this happening here and this happening here. But when we get, like Ellie said, when we get, when we got to the venue that we ended up choosing, it was, it was like the stars aligned because you have to have all these things that we want to happen. And we found a space that has spots and allows all these things to happen. So that was really, really cool for, for us to find that venue. And having chosen your venue space now, do you feel like the rest of the decisions you're going to be making over the next 11 months or so, does that feel easier now that you have the space and you actually know, did that Absolutely. answer a lot of questions for you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we, we didn't know, like, we didn't know if we wanted to hire a decorator. We didn't know how we envisioned the space. And so after we got our venue, even then it was kind of stressful because we were like, okay, well, how are we going to set it up? What's like optimally the best way? And then we actually talked to a designer, I'm sorry, a decorator. And he was like, oh, well, I've done weddings here before numerous times. So here's the best way to do things and like built that timeline. And now I feel like, I don't, I hate to say it, but I feel like I can just kick my feet back and relax for a little bit. Like I could breathe and like people are taking care of the things that I was going to stress about. <laughs> the past conversations we've had after the venue has been chosen were decorating. That was the biggest, the next biggest hurdle after that. And it was just boom, boom, boom. Everything, like I said, falling in line right after we chose that venue. Starting out, like you're engaged. And that's why we did a two year engagement. Cause like, I really wanted time to enjoy it before the planning process, but it's like you you have like a little high of like, oh my God, I'm engaged. I get to plan a wedding. And then you're faced with like, what even goes into planning a wedding? Like you don't know. And so having like going from like super overwhelmed to not even knowing where to start. And then you find your venue and then you get a decorator. And then like the steps to it is just like, it feels better. After you get one thing, you feel good. After you get another, you feel even better. Yes. Great point. And that leads so seamlessly into the next part of our conversation where I really wanted to focus more on your overall wedding planning experience just in general. And it sounds like one of the most surprising pieces of getting the plans rolling was just kind of the general sense of overwhelm, which I think is really, really common. And the two of you have done such a beautiful job of illustrating how once you get that big centerpiece decision made, which in this case is the venue, and I think for most couples, that's the case, then it can really kind of start to unfold from there. It makes, it's overwhelming when you don't have any of the pieces in place, but getting that one centerpiece put into place just really does a nice job of guiding those other decisions that you make from there. All right, let's chat about something close to my heart. We often prioritize wedding photography and for a good reason, but here's a thought. Videography is just as, if not more pivotal. Why? While photos freeze a moment, videos capture the ambiance, the laughter, the music, and those spontaneous fleeting emotions. Enter shutter and sound films. Their work isn't just videography, it's cinematic artistry. Relive the tremble in your partner's voice, the joyous applause, or that unexpected dance move during your reception. It's all there woven into a high-end film that's uniquely yours. And for those wondering about locations, they've got 14 major U.S. cities covered, including spots like Boston, New York, L.A., and D.C. Plus, they're all about adventure and are more than willing to travel for your big day. So as you plan, remember, photos frame moments, but videos, they let you step back inside them. Check out Shutter and Sound Films at shutterandsound.com and let your wedding day be a cinematic masterpiece you'll revisit time and time again. 
Men's Skincare and Caldera Lab are the perfect pair for you to look and feel your best. Super easy to add to your morning and nightly routine. You'll experience clear skin, less wrinkles, and signs of aging. What's not to love? Caldera Lab creates high-performance men's skincare products, and The Regimen leads off their product lineup. It's a twice-a-day routine to transform your guy's skin in the months leading up to the wedding. The regimen includes three easy-to-use products, the Clean Slate, the Base Layer, and the Good. And my husband John is already loving the look and feel of his skin after just a couple of weeks. Finally, he actually understands why I have been so obsessed with my skincare routine for all these years. We're talking face wash, daily moisturizer, and multifunctional nighttime serum that helps your guy's skin look tighter and smoother, as well as helps reduce the visibility of wrinkles and fine lines. And just for our audience, we have an exclusive deal. You're not beating this offer. Use wedding at calderalab.com and 20% off right now. Get 20% off with code wedding at calderalab.com to make unforgettable first impressions with the best gift this holiday season. 20% off at calderalab.com with code wedding. Susan's Travel Services is so excited to partner with you to plan your honeymoon, destination wedding, or maybe even your bachelor or bachelorette party. Susan and her team have been planning dream vacations for 27 years, and they are truly the best in the business for start to finish planning services. Travel and new experiences are incredibly special to me, and Susan and her team have helped me plan some unforgettable vacations, including a bachelorette party in Cabo and a family anniversary celebration in Cancun. They meticulously researched the best all-inclusive options for us based on some very specific priorities and the professional assistance in choosing location, resort, activities, and transportation was absolutely priceless. From all-inclusive resorts in Mexico and the Caribbean, overwater bungalows in the Maldives, or that African safari that you've always dreamed of, save yourself hours of research and guesswork and let Susan and her team find you the best options for a -a once-in-a-lifetime vacation. Reach out to Susan and her team today by emailing info at susanstravelservices.com and be sure to let her know that I sent you and get $50 off your final booking or $200 off your destination wedding. Her email one more time is info at susanstravelservices.com. Let's shift into your wedding planning experiences in general. What have been some of the challenges that you've faced over the past couple months as you've started putting your plans into place? The first thing that comes to mind uh, talking about all that is the guest list. We both come from very large families here uh, in Southwest Louisiana. And the venue that we chose ended up not being one of the biggest. It still holds quite a few people. But it was still a challenge just to make sure we're staying under those limitations and also taking into consideration kids and things like that. Um, That was probably the biggest thing we've had. I don't even know, probably five drafts, rough drafts of guest lists so far. (laughs) And I don't think we're on the final one yet. So I went into this kind of telling myself, like, be prepared to have hard conversations. I don't think this way, but you kind of have to when you're planning a wedding of like, it's your wedding. Think selfishly as a couple, what you want for your wedding versus what everyone else's expectations are. And I'm a people pleaser. So it's very hard to tell people no, but I kind of mentally prepared and was like, okay, well, I know that this is about to be kind of a hard season of everybody telling you what they think, everybody putting that on you. And you either have to like tell them no or Like we did, we just got a venue that was smaller. So we didn't have to send people away. We were just like, sorry, this is all the venue holds. (laughs) So just kind of like working around then. And at the end of the day, like we're, we're both fighting hard for what we want. And that's how I want to spend my wedding. That's how I want to spend the time with the people nearest to me, um, fighting for something that 
I really want. And so, I mean, so far, both of our families have really been like, you know, they've stood back, they let us kind of explain what we want and they're all on board, but I know closer to time, things are going to kind of get hectic. And then along those same lines, what are three or maybe four or maybe two of your top wedding priorities? And then on the flip side of that, what are three things that you've decided to either skip or leave out or just scale way back on to accommodate your priorities? I know one for Eloise was a dance floor. Yes. That's kind of a nod to the video series. So we'll look out for that part. <laughs> um, and also, like I said, the the catering for our friends and the open bar. I think both of those, we want to have specialty drinks. I want to say that half of my family is from Belgium. And so how we do weddings in Belgium is, well, generally in Europe, is that they last forever. Like it, it'll be like three o'clock in the morning and we're still all the dance floor. We're still eating. We're still having fun. So I wanted to also have, have that freedom to, if we wanted it to last till three, we can, if we wanted to end it at midnight, we can. So that was also big into finding our venue too. And the dance floor that goes along with that, with holding the party. <laughs> oh, we did want to tailor like, like I said before, we wanted to tailor our wedding to suit us. And so um, going through kind of like timeline wise, we skipped pretty much like some of the traditional things. Like, I don't think we're doing um, bouquet toss, garter toss kind of thing. We may skip over like money dance. Just I just recommend whatever feels right for you and like your couple like you as a couple whatever feels right and if you want to do a money dance if you feel comfortable doing that do it if you don't it's not a loss you don't have to plan your wedding because somebody else planned it this way and it's tradition like you can really tailor it to what you like and your needs very okay. smart advice tying back to what you said earlier about having hard conversations with people because everyone comes out of the woodwork as soon as you get engaged and they have their ideas and of course you're going to do this, right? And you're like, eh, probably not. <laughs> How do so I true. let you know that without hurting your feelings? Any? Do you have anything to add there, Grant, about things that you plan on scaling back or skipping or just leaving out entirely? What comes to mind for me is the actual ceremony itself and just trying to figure out uh, who's walking down with who. Are we doing a first look? Are we not? Mainly for photography, from a photography standpoint we can save time to do a first look that kind of thing um we're still kind of talking about that and figuring the details out with that but those are two big things that are are big right now first look is big i'm not a big fan of it because i would like to see her come down the aisle that's the first time i want to see her but i do get the point of doing a first look and then doing photographs before it it's pros and cons yeah always always weighing weighing a benefit versus a a trade-off. What vendor, what other vendors have you hired and how did that process go? We have, I mean, honestly, it's gone pretty smooth and it's kind of just happened naturally. Like it just so happens that we kind of know people that Mm -hmm. like, I already have a hairstylist and she's one of my sister's really good friends. She does hair and makeup. We found a decorator um, word of mouth. Someone was like, you know, he's done these weddings. You can go on his Facebook and look and he does a great job. Also, sometimes photographers will list when they take a picture of a wedding, they will list like, this is the vendor. This is the decorator. This is the florist. And that was great. Anytime I found a post like that, I would go down the list and go look at their social media pages and see like, okay, this, this could be a potential florist. That's how I found the florist that we're going to use is that I saw a girl that got married in the same chapel that we were going to. And then she had a bouquet that I was like, this is exactly what I want. And it was tagged. I was like, bless. So then I went and I went to go look at the page. I called her up. She was like, yes, I'm free. Cause I mean, we have a year, but it was just like, it all happened naturally. And it was, it was pretty, so far it's been really smooth. Right. And just talk about also for like suits for my guys and me. Uh, we just walked in and me thinking it's so daunting to have because I've got 
uh, four guys that live in town and three guys that live out of town. Um, and we walked in and I explained the whole situation and he was like, yeah, that's fine. Just whenever they come in town, we'll get them fitted and it's fine. So it's just more of like a daunting task in your head before you do it. And same thing for the cake. Everybody so far has just been super helpful. You walk in and you tell them what your idea is or what you're thinking about. And they say, yeah, that's fine. We can do that right there on the spot. So it's been, it's, it's daunting and overwhelming at first, but then if you just take it one at a time, everybody's generally there to help you out. Which yes. is nice. Another hack is that when we were touring venues, one of the venues had like a preferred caterer list or like a preferred vendor list. And though we didn't go through that venue, we did use that list because it was really nice to have. I mean, it was like what they did, their name and their contact information. So we went through that list too. And we were like, this is really good contact to have. Like, it was so nice to have it all in one place, which I guess that's also why you hire a wedding planner. (laughs) You guys have done such a good job doing it on your own. That's awesome. And then as we wrap up here, what would be some of your top pieces of advice that you'd like to share with other engaged couples who are listening? Kind of what we talked about earlier and what you hit on, just having your non-negotiables set out. Talked about just between you and your significant other and figuring that out, knowing what y'all want absolutely to happen and absolutely to have on that day or night just trying to make those happen first. I think one was kind of like what we had already talked about, but I just really wanted to preserve my relationship with the people near me that I know would be excited to plan this. And I just took that extra step to kind of say like, Hey, I know you're excited for this wedding. We're excited too. But every time we talk, it doesn't have to be about this wedding. You know, like we had family members that, every time they see us that's the only thing that they would talk about and try to plan and I'm like I get it It is very exciting but also like I want to hang out with you I just want to talk about other things like and sometimes I don't want to think about a wedding because I've been thinking about it for a month you know so also kind of like navigating that After meeting the two of you and watching your venue shopping adventures, I will definitely be adding Lake Charles to my travel list. Can you share where we can tune into this exciting four-part video series? Uh, This series can be viewed on the Visit Lake Charles YouTube channel, and it is also linked in their social media posts on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the socials. And then, of course, I'll have a link in the show notes as well for anyone who wants to just take a peek when you have a hands-free moment and you can click right over and view all four episodes. Thank you again so much for taking the time to come on today and share all of your wedding planning wisdom with us. And I will be thinking of you both over the next year as you continue to plan your incredible wedding celebration. Thank you. It was so nice to meet you. Yeah, it was good to meet you guys too. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. You know what's the number one biggest regret that newlywed couples share? It's that our wedding came, went, and was over in the blink of an eye. So why not extend the experience out across multiple days and multiple events and make it a wedding weekend? There are just six easy steps to planning a life-changing wedding weekend, and you can access the formula right now when you visit weddingweekend.co. Take advantage of flexible payment options or pay in full and get a complimentary wedding strategy call when you visit weddingweekend.co. I'll see you there.